Hey folks, Quillate Dean here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Hearts of Iron 3 as the Soviet Union, and victory is within our grasp. The war is still raging, but we have Berlin. Germany is basically broken over here, um, which is excellent. We still, you know, have some land occupied by Japan in the east, but it's not particularly valuable or important land, and we can certainly take it back in the future. We, unless I'm mistaken, we only need 12 victory conditions to actually win overall the war. And we have it. In fact, uh, Turkey we had. We actually, Italy currently occupies one province in Turkey that we need. I think if that changes, uh, that would be there. The other uh, victory conditions we could pursue is basically ownership of a lot of the Asian territory, um, including Hong Kong. And also we could go after Spain, uh, which is what I did in the last time I played because I didn't have the, I had the Turkey goal, uh, but I hadn't set up uh, Istanbul as a specific target um, like I did this time. So I needed one more victory point. So I went for, uh, for Spain. But I've got a troop sending over there. I've got Turkey told to go that way. I'm not going to rush it too much. I've got like one mechanized core or motorized core to go to um, to that province I need. But that's it. We're still going to try to make a beeline for uh, for Paris. I think we went and took Copenhagen because we had Copenhagen and one other province. Was it this uh, Orhus over here? I'm not sure. Um, that was enough to cause a re regime change in Denmark. They were part of the Allies. And they were actually um, independent-ish again. They had enough of a sort of a re rebellion going on that Denmark existed once more. But because we grabbed the control points, even though we didn't declare war on them, we have a regime change. We just changed their government and said, listen, you're socialist now. Which is awesome. We may have to go for uh, Sweden. That would just be funny. Not really in a good position to do it. Okay. Um, yes. So we have a lot of troops. Ooh, you are in big trouble, mister. You are in a substantial amount of trouble. Can someone get in there and relieve you with any type of alacrity? Okay, yes, we're going to get Frankfurt over here. Boom. Good. Okay, you still got pushed back. But you can not You can retreat, is what this means. Hey, the fall of Berlin! Berlin, Adolf Hitler's envisioned... Welthauptstadt Germania has finally succumbed to the advancing Red Army. After a pitch battle, well, they, it fell a while ago, actually. But I guess maybe, like, it fell long enough for the game to be like, okay, yeah, you, you legit own it. Um, and it's surrounded enough. Maybe we have the whole region. That might help, too. Uh, after a pitch battle in which Soviet troops stormed the critical Silau Heights east of Berlin, the heavy fighting was brought into the city itself. German pioneers attempt to the speedy demolition of the Maltke Bridge over the Spree, but only partially succeed, with Russian infantry still able to cross in large numbers. After a fierce battle inside the Reichstad, Reichstad building, the Soviet flag is finally raised on its roof. Boom. All right, and we're going to continue to move forward. These are still, um, these are Slovakian troops. Still fighting. Good on them. They lost their homeland a long time ago, but they have not lost the will to fight. Who is this? Mexico! Mexico over here. USA. Oh man, are we going to be able to get to Paris? It's a long way. It's a good thing the troops aren't landing in Normandy. Because I want to get Paris. We'll see. May or may not work. Let's go ahead and speed it up. And speed it up some more. Uh, if I still have some anti-air stuff, no, and I don't. I still have plenty of planes, which you don't really need as badly. Well, maybe then, other than cancel, I'll just go ahead and like queue up some of the infantry a little bit higher. Because that'll help us actually conquer land a bit more. Okay, let's keep that going. At least the uh, strategic bombardment against us should mostly be over, because most of the airfields have been taken. That is a big stack. They are going to be able to run to here, but they have no organization, and now they're stuck here with no organization. All these guys are running to this spot here. But they're basically already broken. There's a lot of them, mostly reinforcements, but as soon as this breaks, this is going to be stack wiped completely. They'll have nowhere to go. And bam. Completely exterminated them. They'll try to reform, like technically the, the those divisions in name will try to reform in the new German capital, wherever that is. But they're going to start off with no manpower, no organization. They're basically non-existent. Trade offer from Liberia. No, I'll probably get some. Great Air Force just triggered. We have over 100 airplane wings, giving us a bonus to leadership and organization regain rate. That's great, because, yeah, there's all these um, strategic effects you can work on over here. All right, and if you get these, you get a bunch of different bonuses. So we have Great Army a long time ago. We're far and far away from a Grand Fleet, but you can get it with 100 ships. Veteran Navy. 
Naval battles fought at least 250. Do we have a, we have veteran army? We fought <laughs> we fought at least 250 of them. Yes, we fought 3,800 battles. So yes, we definitely have a veteran um, army. All right, troops are continuing to move forward pretty aggressively. Oh, we won because oh because we conquered Italy. Because we conquered Italy, Italy was holding that province over here in Turkey that was stopping us from uh, from getting our victory condition. If we look now at victory conditions, we are at 12, which is what you need. We have won. However, we're only five minutes in this video, so let's continue. We have won. Congratulations, the Soviet Union has won World War II. No thanks to the Allies. We had to do everything ourselves. We won in 1943. I'm playing on normal difficulty, of course. Um, but let's, uh, let's keep going here. I'm just going to keep going fast speed and see if we can take Paris. And you know what? What am I doing? Guys, what am I doing? Um, this, which is Smolensk. Let me modify your, uh, your frontage a bit here. Like this. And you specifically, you're not going for Paris. You're going for Brussels. At a blitz pace. Can you not blitz? Why is that? What? I'm confused. Yeah. Alright. I don't know why. Tell you what. I'm gonna tell you to hit Brits uh, Paris and Brussels. Basically the same thing, right? They're the same city? Ireland? No. And yeah, we'll just try to punch through as quickly as possible. There's still a lot of German troops over here. A lot of German troops. I have to get through Dusseldorf City. Taking cities is hard. Ooh, we oh, got them. Our cores was shattered completely. So they'll reform in the capital. But effectively, all those men just died. Period. Oh, we have no manpower left. Wow. I did not realize we had gone through our entire manpower reserve over here. So even building new people would be hard. Yeah. So many reinforcements needed. Well, all right. Yeah, Sian, Sian King, you're fine. Or whatever your, pro your country is named. And again... Tell you what, I'm just going to move all your troops to the Kiev. So this army group, detach, reattach to the Kiev HQ. Same thing. Um, okay, something visually weird going on here. The other army group, same thing. I'm detach you, and I'm attaching you to the Kiev HQ. There. Now you'll participate in the battle over here. Things will get reorganized, but that's okay. Actually, I'm going to make sure that... Um... Yeah, like, you are part of the structure, but something graphically is weird. This happens sometimes in this game. That's why you have to reload it from time to time. Hearts of Iron 3, a bit of an older game. When there's a lot of stuff on the screen, sometimes the uh, the UI glitches out. Luxembourg is now part of the common term. You're damn right now. Brussels. Oh, I don't know if we're going to make it before the Americans. The Americans might liberate Belgium. No! There's just too many troops for us to fight along the way. Yay, leadership. We enforce conquer on Germany. France is now a puppet of the common term. How did we flip... France! Norway is now a puppet of common term. I guess because we took all of Germany. All their territory flipped to me. Ah, but no. Belgium is in the hands of the British. God damn. This game is a failure, you guys. Let's restart. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, this is all... Libreville HQ. Really? We got a new HQ? Odessa, Libreville. Interesting. But I could take, like, Smolensk. Just to say. And tell you from Madrid. And Kiev. Tell you to go for um, Barcelona. Let the troops line up on the border. Belgium's liberated! Uh, various pop-ups are not quite working right. Too many Soviet troops. 
Actually, that, that may very well be the case. By running the Soviets, um, our UI is sort of aware of all the Soviet troops more than if we were playing as another country. That might be a thing. I mean, we've already won. But let's see if we can just take Spain real quick. Technically, we're still at war with numerous people. Japan is actually holding this territory, for example. You can go and try to take out Tokyo, but no. I'll see if I can grab Spain. So what's our victory points? I think we're still probably just at 12, right? Yeah. So we'll get a 13th if we can grab Spain. It's only been 10 minutes into the video. Let's do it. Netherlands liberated. Well, congratulations. Allies member. Allies member. I'm so mad that I couldn't get Belgium. I'm so mad. You've got your goal over here. Uh, I don't know if the troops are properly going to move here because I don't have... Um... Can I set, like, Kiev? Can I designate these provinces? No, I can't. And things are just going to move back over here because of the way the fronts work. Uh, I, I could do it, but it, it'll involve, I think, a little bit more um, manipulation of stuff. I'm really disappointed that I couldn't get Brussels. But otherwise, there we go. We have finished. I mean, again, 1943, we ended World War II. Um, we, until we defeat um, the Axis, like, completely, basically, by going, Oh, this is not a good thing. I did not mean to do that. That's going to, yeah. Nothing's working. Probably the game's about to crash. Um, I'd have, probably have to go and grab Tokyo to get the Axis to completely surrender unconditionally, uh, at which point all of German territory would become actually part of the Soviet Union. Um, I mean, it's some war goals and stuff, but it's... No, we're just going to conquer you. Um, but remember, France is my puppet, right? Common term, France. Is there a way to just see, like, the... I mean, there's political map mode, but is there, like, another sort of... Diplomatic map boat. There we go. This is all red, but it's all occupied by us. Right? Like Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, they probably have like um, a government in exile or something crazy like that. Right? Like this is all occupied by us. Italy. This is all ours. I mean, maybe we have to negotiate something with the uh, UK to say, hey, why don't we split Germany in, in little bits and pieces? No, that wouldn't make any sense. We'll just hold on to all of it. But we have finished our game. I really, really, really enjoy Hearts of Iron 3. Um, the client, the software, the UI is a little bit weird and, and glitchy sometimes. But man, oh man, is it ever a satisfying game. Um, we might do another Let's Play of this. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to keep playing it in my spare time. What I've never done is played a game as the UK or the US. Sort of island nations and a very, very, very different feel from playing as Germany, which I have played, where Germany you instigate things. And the Soviet Union is is reactive in a sense, but a little bit more active. You've got some wars you can start in Finland, um, and you're certainly free to start things in uh, down here if you want, which is fun times. Us grabbing Romania early was very, very, very helpful. Um, but we didn't do as much politicking as we might have to. It's very important as the UK, because you want to get people to join the Allies as quickly as possible. You want to increase the apparent threat of Germany and um, Japan and the Soviet Union as much as possible to discourage people from joining the Axis in the common term. Um, and as the UK, I mean, we're just going to assume, especially if you play, you know, historically and not find ways to, you know, be tricksy, you have to assume that, you know, the low countries and France are going to fall to Germany. And at some point you're going to have to figure out a way to take it back and, you know, do a big invasion, which sounds hard, sounds very difficult. I don't know exactly how I'd pull it off. And doubly so is the USA, where you're so far away and for the first, like, um, I don't know, almost 10 years of the game, and you know, two or three years of the actual war, you're not even allowed to fight. You're too neutral. So you have to wait for things to change before you can actually start building up an army. But once you do, you have massive amounts of resources and massive amounts of production, but you have to handle a gargantuan Pacific, um, like, naval war, right? And, uh, frankly, a fair amount of Atlantic warfare as well. So you need a, a really monstrous navy. And then, to do anything, you're going to have to figure out how to do amphibious invasions, which is, uh, I don't know, it's a whole other skill set to learn. So I'm probably going to dabble with one of those. Uh, I definitely can't do back-to-back -back Let's Plays. I'll have to you know, just rest a little bit here, but there might be another Let's Play, assuming we still have a while before Hearts of Iron 4 comes out. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.